Hey guys, Remathan here back again. So today we got another review for you guys. In our hands we have the Asus WS Z390 Pro. So you can see today we have a blue backdrop because it's a gloomy Sunday and it's also Intel review. First thing first, I'd like to thank Asus for letting us this motherboard again to play with. So this is a very interesting board from Asus. See from our previous video the X570, they do a lot of gaming motherboards but this is their very cool workstation motherboard. Very very different board, very interesting board from Asus. So we'd like to bring Gordon in to run you through what's so special and cool about this workstation board. So Gordon, please take it away. Okay, thanks Mel. So right off, first off, before I can start this thing, do the unboxing. Okay, first off, we have the quick start guide that here, followed by the all important instruction manual. We have the board itself here. I will get it out first because we'll go into way more detail on this board a little while later. So yeah, if you look inside there, there's a lot of things inside there that comes with it. What are they? We'll start off with a couple of uh, usual stuff. Okay, first off, we have the SATA cables. There's uh, one pair here. We have another pair of SATA cables, so that makes a total of four so far. And a uh, third pair. You have a total of six SATA cables. That's quite a lot of SATA cables because usually in most mainstream motherboards, you only get one pair. That means two cables. Now these three items are quite interesting. This is the two-way SLI bridge. This is the three-way SLI bridge. You can see it's a little bit longer. And this is the four-way SLI bridge. So two, okay. three, four. This is the IO shield for the motherboard. And this is the flexible SLI bridge cable. But there are a couple of things here that are rather interesting because you don't find them in most other motherboards. First off, we have this. This is a USB header to the rear. This could be for older cases where they don't have a USB 2 header to the front. Or it could be for some server for your Rex cases where they don't have any USB 2 outputs to the front. This you can mount two additional USB 2s to the rear. This thing here. <laughs> Asus calls it the CPU installation tool. It is not called the CPU applicator, contrary to a certain video by a channel that starts with the letter V, which again I shall not elaborate any further in case they send a copyright strike away. <laughs> For bad humor. For bad humor. This is a 9-pin COM port header or serial port header. You may be wondering, in this day and age, who uses the serial port when everything from your mouse to your keyboard is all on USB? That may be the case in uh, consumer space, but if you are looking at where this board is targeted at industrial workstation segments, there is a lot of scientific diagnostic industrial equipment that still uses the 9-pin serial header. So this is a very useful thing for them to have. In fact, for their equipment, which can cost quite a fair bit, so they probably don't want to switch to a USB equivalent. This is a godsend. Let's see, M.2 screws, M.2 screws, pretty usual. There's two of them, because the motherboard, as later I'll show you, has two M.2 slots. The little adapter for putting your front panel cables, like power, hard disk activity light and all that, so you can one-shot plug into the motherboard. So this is one thing you need to put out this motherboard. Okay, right. One last thing in the box, probably guessed it. It's the driver DVD. I have rather mixed feelings about this, considering that most of the sets I built nowadays don't even have a DVD drive. It would have been rather nice if they had provided the drivers and say like a USB flash drive like what they did with the Asus TRX40 Zenith Extreme that we reviewed previously. That one had a USB drive that contained all the drivers and software. This one comes on the DVD. Yeah, that's everything out of the box. So I shall now go further into detail on the layout on this board. I will not bore you with details such as how many fan haters there are, but I will just point out the ones that are rather unique and rather pertinent to this board itself. Especially since this board costs six ninety nine Singapore dollars. You may probably be wondering, other than all this, what makes this guy cost six ninety nine? Okay, so now we get the board out. Hmm, I like the smell of fresh printed circuit boards in the morning. Now the first thing that strikes you about this board is that how black how discreet it actually is. Most Asus motherboards in this price range are usually very colourful affairs. Basically anything with the word ROG on the streaks like that will be multicoloured with splashes of red. This guy is just plain black. Like my shirt today. Well, I mean it has the typical features of a Z390 motherboard. Again I shall not bore you with the details of it. It has a lot of fan connectors. You can dig up more information on their website. What makes this board very notable and very unique from a lot of other Z390 motherboards is first and foremost you have U.2 connectors here. On set here one set here because this motherboard is geared towards the workstation industrial server crowd U.2 connections are often used by enterprise grade SSDs and other storage devices so yeah here they are second thing notable about this board is that one two three 
for for full length PCIe Thumb 16 expansion slot. Of course, this is not the only Z390 motherboard that you can find with four full length slots. But the one thing that a lot of people don't quite notice or don't quite know is very often on most other Z390 motherboards with four full length slots, when you populate all four of the slots, there will be bandwidth limitations. For other Z390 motherboards, when you only have one GPU, for example, this will operate at PCIe 3.0 times 16 bandwidth. But if you have two GPUs, this will operate at PCIe 3.0 times 8, PCIe times 8. So what happens to the other four full length slots? On a lot of other Z390 motherboards, this will be times 4, this will be times 4. 8, 4, 8. For. This is due to a limitation of both the Intel 8 9 Gen CPU itself as well as the chipset limitation itself. On this board, however, ASUS has pulled off a little magic trick using what is known as a PLX chip from Broadcom. The PLX chip is not visible here because it's hiding under this giant ASUS heatsink along with the Z390 chipset. The Z390 chipset sits roughly about here. The PLX chip is somewhere about here. So what does this PLX chip do? It's basically a splitter or multiplexer of sorts, for lack of a better. Term. What it does is that it splits off the PCIe Express signals. Instead of having 8, 4, 8, 4, when you have 4 GPUs, for example, it becomes 8, 8, 8, 8. You all know most modern GPUs require at least PCIe 3 times 8 to operate at their full capacity. The RTX 3080 Ti especially requires minimum PCIe 3 times 8 to work at either its full potential or near to its full potential. So, in short, this board was designed to do something that is largely the domain of much more expensive HEDT platforms such as Intel's uh, X299 Skylake X or AMD's new TRX40 Threadripper platform. Yeah, this is the magic trick that he has up his sleeve. Let me rotate around here to the back I.O. itself. Yeah, first it's got two LAN ports, two Intel Gigabit LAN. Okay, in an industrial commercial setting, there are valid reasons why you may want two LAN ports. Mainly for situations where this computer needs to have access to two separated networks. So this one could be connected to network number one, and this could be connected to a second network. There may be IT infrastructure where a functionality like this is required. There's the usual stuff down here, USB Type-C, BIOS, flashback button this is to enable you to update the BIOS without having a CPU physically plugged in which is always a good thing the usual USB ports audio and for output you have both a HDMI as well as a display port so this allows you to use the Intel onboard HD graphics as display out another thing that makes this board a little bit special is the COM port header down here that's your two-digit diagnostic code LED the other thing that makes this board very special is the Thunderbolt 3 header you may be wondering what does this header do contrary to what a lot of users may assume you cannot just go out and buy uh, let's say the Azus Thunderbolt 3 expansion card plug it into here with the Thunderbolt 3 connector coming out and you get Thunderbolt 3 no it doesn't quite work that way usually you see the expansion card will have one wire coming from it to here that wire from here to the Thunderbolt 3 expansion card this job is basically to tell the Thunderbolt 3 expansion card that yes I am a Thunderbolt 3 certified motherboard so take it away if you do not connect that wire that Thunderbolt 3 card simply won't work which is why you'll notice that most motherboards that do come with this Thunderbolt 3 header usually carry a sizable price premium due to a licensing guideline for Thunderbolt 3 from Intel. Then of course there's the usual others as well, the USB 2, USB Type-C front panel connector, USB 3. So one last notable feature on this board, keeping with the fact that this board was designed to handle 4 GPUs, there is one feature that is usually also only found on HDT motherboards which is this guy right over here. The 6-pin PCI power connector down here is basically to supply additional juice to the 4 slots. This is for situations where 4 GPUs is where it helps to help stabilize the connection. You've got two M.2 slots under the shield of your one here and one here. So that concludes my little run through of this motherboard itself. To sum it up, the one main selling point of this board is the PLX chip sitting here, which allows this board to run for GPUs, something which is found only in the GTT platforms. So yes, thank you Gordon for running us through this very amazing position board by Asus again. Okay. So this is just part 1 of the video where we run through it. So there will be a part 2 coming out where we will show you how it looks like when it's powered on. On the first preview, Gordon, what do you think about this board so far? It's a very impressive board, I will give it that. Got a lot of functionality very unique to it compared to a lot of other Z390 motherboards on the market. So all in all, I'll say based on those earlier features, those are features that I look very much forward to testing in part 2 of this video. What are you looking forward to when it's powered up? Let's see how many GPUs I can run on this thing. Yeah, let's give you a hint, it's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something inside that's very interesting. We have something that we can show you when it's power up. Very interesting when it comes to the whole session board. So Gordon, you know what it is? Mm, I don't know, you tell me. What's part two when it comes out? <laughs> <laughs> so 
this is another board review. So if you'd like to watch more of my other board reviews, check out my Asus Space. We have Tough Motherboard as mentioned in the earlier part of the video. Tough Motherboard, even the latest one with the Zenith Web Queen. Yes, check it out. Maybe we will power it on someday. So anyway, check out those videos and check out my other playlists. Click on I icon, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell to know when I upload new videos. So check out for part two coming up very, very soon.